Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to see you guys today. Just stand or sit wherever you guys want to be, and we just uh, we'll open up its worship. anything there we go we're in awesome um so we have a, a potluck a pharaoh potluck today we'll have opportunity to discuss that with uh scott and karen as god moves them on to arlington and some new uh, adventures that it has for them but uh amen i am just glad to be in the house of the lord i'm glad his presence is here and he is desiring to just draw near to us amen as we draw near to him he's faithful and so let's pray father god we just uh we thank you for the opportunity we have to just draw near to you. Lord, we do ask, Lord, that you'd meet with us. We know that you're already here, but we ask, Father, that you would meet with us. Lord, that, Lord, that you would just uh, bring light into every area of our lives that you want to expose for your purpose in your grace and your love. That, Lord, that we would not leave this place the same way we came. Father, we'd be transformed by your goodness and your love. Lord, I pray that you just uh, just receive our worship this morning. May it be as a sweet incense unto you. Father, may it be just a, a beautiful music, Lord, as we 
seeing from the depths of our hearts the outward reality, of, uh, inward reality of, of what you have done in our lives and the outward reality of what you're doing in every way. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning. La 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 la
have the outfit team come up.
creation, that one we sing, we sing to you, Father, we sing to you, God. choice in our worship. And we love you. We love you so much. Because you first loved us. normally it's time we break, but I want to make a quick announcement. Today is uh, Ron's birthday. He's turning he's turning 29 today, so uh, and so uh, just uh, be sure to give him a big hug and love on him, and uh, he's a day younger and a dollar short, and uh, there you go. Well, somebody knows how old he is, so amen. Well, bless you guys. Let's take a few moments. Let's connect. And uh, there's some st refreshments, coffee in the back. Uh, the table at the very back is for after the service, so maybe let's not graze that one quite yet. Uh, we've got, we'll have some more information instruction around that, but on the side table. And uh, let somebody know you're glad they're here.
All right. Let's grab a grab a seat. Amen. Well, a couple of announcements for you today. One that i uh, just kind of give you a heads up on. Um, Had Ministry meets on Friday nights here. If you know anybody that's needing recovery, in recovery, would like to uh, be a part of a faith-based uh, program, uh, plan to come. They also need help with people getting people here. So uh, the church van is available if needed. Um, also, uh, there is a bulletin on your table. And I know this, we're set up. This doesn't mean we're going back to the tables. This just means today we have a potluck for the service, and it made sense not to eat around chairs but around tables. So, uh, so you got the tables today, and uh, and we're going to be saying goodbye to uh, Scott and Karen, and uh, we'll say a little bit more just to let you know um, the Lord has really provided. Uh, Karen is going on staff in a very healthy church up in Arlington, Life Three Hundred and Sixty. Uh, she's going to take over their children's uh, ch- child care director for their program and she gets to start from scratch and uh, it is definitely not a lateral move for her it's an up move Uh, all of their by the end of august they will all have medical which is something they have not had for a couple years so that will be wonderful Uh, scott also starts his new job monday so he already uh, up there as well so they are trying to figure out how to get up there and uh, commute they're gonna be moving and uh, they may need somebody's help to help them move but uh we wanted to give an opportunity to give him a farewell. So today we're going to do a potluck and a barbecue. Following the service, you're all welcome to stay and be a part of that and to kind of love on them. And, uh, and uh, we'll have some more at the end of the service in regards to that. Uh, we have our ladies have a game night on the 3rd of August. That's going to be at 6.30. That'll be here. And uh, so uh, there's information in the bulletin regarding that as well. And um, the Edible Garden Tour, the Minette Edible Garden Tour is going to be here on the 4th of August, and that's going to be from 9 to 1. And uh, they're going to be spotlighting our garden that we have out here, and uh, uh, just a bunch of things with that. And they have between two and 400 people come through, will come through here that day. So if you're interested uh, to come and be a part and to love on them, we'll be opening our bathrooms up and our facility for the community as they usually set everything up here in the parking lot, and this becomes their, for the whole Manette, uh tour of all the gardens, comes out here. And... Uh, I also wanted to let you know, um, as of yesterday, 3.30 p.m., Doris Yaden went home to be with the Lord. Um, she, uh, we sat this last week. She was really ready to go home, and uh, we talked about that. And uh, great woman of faith. Her and her husband, Jerry, founded this church in 1950. And so uh, it was there. I talked to her daughter last night, and her daughter was, uh, you know, how you doing? She, they were actually, the family was in pretty good spirits. They they said, well, we knew her mom was going, and we knew she wanted to be there, and we're going to see her again. They had all right perspective around that, and so it was, uh, it was there. So, uh, But keep that family in prayer as they, uh, um, as they prepare as, and, and all that's there. At this point, I don't know any details about a service, so they're going to get back to me and let me know. Uh, I, I know there's, they're going back and forth, actually, Charlotte. So I know Doris didn't want one, but at the end of her life, she said, do what you want. So... Um, they might do something, so we'll, we'll find out more. If there is, we'll let you know. Um, also, uh, the, I think the final thing that I'd have here is, uh, is you guys are just beautiful today. And you're all looking really good for summer. Yeah, and it's going to be 90 degrees today. Can you say caliente? So, okay. So, uh, it's going to be hot. But, uh, and, uh, well, what's the other hot that's for food? Kaloa. Yeah. So I got it right. Caliente was the right hot, right? Okay, good. So my wife brought home some, some ginger ale last night that had cayenne and chili peppers in it. And it was very interesting. So we had that at dinner. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yes. Come on up. On August 10th, Had Ministries is having a barbecue from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. right here in the parking lot. Friday night, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's an hour before Had starts, but I figure dinner time, 6. So we're going to do a barbecue, and Had is providing 
hot dogs and hamburgers, and if you guys want to come, you're invited, or bring somebody that needs recovery, and it's a good time to get their hands out and meet people, so thank you. We're also having a dunk tank there, and for if you br whoever brings the most people get a dunk, Heather and Brent, <laughs> into the dunk tank, and so uh, good. Uh, I want to thank I want to thank Ken, uh, Ben for sh and his wife Ruby and uh, their their buddy John, Luke uh, for showing up and helping with our team today. What a blessing! Um, they got scheduled a couple more uh, services this summer, so really appreciate that. So I'm going to turn this over. Uh, Scott and Karen, love you guys, and uh, we're going to take time to pray over you today and uh, just uh, send you guys off. Um, part of the reason for the move is they're trying to get as far away from me as possible. Um, this is this was discussed over dinner the other night. No, um, no. When they sold their house, the, this this discussion came up because um, when Callie moved back to Indiana, they just have not had family support. And uh, many of you don't know this, but they take care of her mom. Uh, her mom is in the home, and that's you know. Uh, she just has a lot of needs, and it's been hard, and they have not had a lot of break or respite. And so one of the things they had been discussing is they have family that live up in the Stanwood area there in Arlington, and if they were able to move close to there, they could get some help. And so that was kind of what I think instigated this whole thing, and they've kind of been waiting and seeing. And uh, we need to pray that God kind of pulls together the house situation. Um, they're trying to buy a house right now, and uh, that and trying to figure out where to live. Uh, they were discussing there was a bridge they found that they could stay under for couple weeks until the house closes but uh until then uh so there's a little transition that's there for that but um i've asked scott to just come and, and uh you know scott's had a quite a year he's not only licensed but he got uh credential but he got ordained this year with the assemblies and so he's uh, uh gonna have and i know his new job is wonderful because he's gonna be working three days a week or he's get yeah he gets four days off and so he'll be able to really step into ministry with the new church as well so and kind of fulfill what God is calling, his calling on his life. But I've asked him to come and just share uh, the word this morning. And uh, if we just attend our hearts to that, if you could hang into your stomachs and uh, for a few moments uh, and, uh, and just uh, hear what God has put on his heart. Amen? Scott? How are you doing this morning? Whoa. Okay, so... You know, she and my wife has told me time and time again that <coughs> I shouldn't have a microphone. <laughs> yeah. So every once in a while I get a microphone and I, I, I kind of get excited. Um, I want to talk about seeking and finding your ministry. It's exciting to know that the pastor is interviewing everybody that's involved in ministry. And I go to the Sermon on the Mount when I think about that. And it, at the after it, the blessed is the peacekeepers and, and all that, it goes to the end and he said, it, it, Matthew 6, 25 through 34 says, Therefore I tell you not to worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you want, where is life more than food, the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you add an hour to your life by worrying? Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows what you need. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness in all things will be given to you as well. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we know that you are watching over each and every one of us from the day we accepted you as our Savior. 
And, Lord Jesus, even watching over us before we knew you. And we thank you for watching over us and lifting us up. We ask it in your name. Amen. You know, I love the text. Um, not only is it the blessed, the peacekeepers, and blessed are the meek and, and that, but it's it's the most exciting, you know, two of the most exciting lessons in life. Knowing when to let go and knowing what to seek after. We can't get so wrapped up in our lives that we forget we are to do what God wants us to do. Two years ago, my wife and I sold our house and we moved into an apartment. And the most important thing that we said was, okay, Lord, what do you have in store for us? We're giving our life to you. Send us where you need us. That was the hardest thing I've had to do. Turn yourself and for each and every person. Surrender everything to the Lord is one of the hardest things that you will do. So we had been talking and, and Pastor shared, we had been talking about moving up to Arlington. We needed help. So surprisingly enough, Life 360 was opening a daycare center, and they posted the job. Karen applied, and in one interview, she had the job. We went up there. They interviewed. The pastor says, I've never opened a daycare center before. I'm going to rely on you. And so the communication between them is, is really interesting. You can ask her about that. Um, but, you know, many years, Karen has followed me. My job working in the armored car company for 30 years, and I moved to Vancouver because the job moved me there. <coughs> she moved down with me, followed me down there. You know, I, that's what wives do, right? They follow us. <laughs> and... and <laughs> And we got down there, and she didn't even have to interview for the job at Mount, Ver at Mount View as a teacher. They just hired her. So when we moved back up here, again, my job moved me up here. She came up here. She was hired without ever interviewing as a daycare so God was watching out for us. When he puts a calling on our hearts, there's a desire there. Sometimes we don't understand what that calling is for. But we must answer that call. We must have faith in his plans. Sometimes his plans don't make sense. We've got to serve others. That's what he's challenged us to do. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong, courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Remember, his plan is not our plan. He's just calling us to have faith in his guidance. God has a purpose for this church. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn, or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church is built up. So what's our purpose? First of all, we've got to evangelize. 
we've got a community out here that needs to be touched. Kitsap County is one of the least at, at churched areas in the Northwest. And it has the most churches. What can we do? Make this building a place that they can be comfortable. I love the fact that they're coming over for the garden. I mean, they know we're supporting their, their community. Can we have some people show up here and help love on them? Everyone desires something. If our spiritual desires are genuine, we can show them the truth and the salvation that Jesus Christ gave us on the cross. We have to remember God will move people in, in and out of our lives, and we don't always know why. I have had people come in my life for a brief period of time. My brother is a Mormon, and him and I go hunting all the time, and we have some interesting conversations. And we were just, he was helping me move the other day some stuff. And we were thinking about our dad, who is really not a believer. And that's a whole nother story. He was when he passed away. But um, <coughs> all we can think of is him seeing his two sons talking about religion and how he would feel about that situation. And Jimmy and I, we don't find much deer when we go hunting, but we have some good conversations. I didn't understand why Karen, you know, the Lord moved us from Hillcrest, moved us to Vancouver, and I didn't understand why. We got down to Vancouver, we were down there for four years, and he moved us back up here. So I was angry. I had a good job. I was working for the armored car company, and why did he move us down there, then move us back up here? We realized, after I got back up here and spent time in prayer, and my wife's leading, that we moved down there because her family was down there. And we had not been in touch or made a connection with her family in years. He moved us down there. We were down there to see her grandmother pass away, her uncle pass away, and we were there for the family during that time frame. Then he moved us back up here. So remember, his reasoning and the reason he does things is because he knows what we need. I see... God preparing this church for great things. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. There's a reason this church is still here. All the years that the pastor has been mulling over and moved from downtown and moved to this location and the, the uh, changing of our debt and, and things. But we have to remember when it, he's ready for us to do what we are supposed to do, he will make it happen. We know God created each of us to do specific things. However, God seldom puts us immediately in place with what we're doing because he has to prepare you. He has to set it up so that you are ready. I remember coming home. I got fired from a job. I'd never been fired before, and I shared this story before. Bank of Cal making $80,000 a year. We just bought a house. We just bought a new car. And I'm working for them for three months, and they fired me. 
I was on the phone to Karen as I was walking down to the ferry dock going, I was in tears. I was going, I've never been fired before. What do I do? She says, go back to school. Go back to the ministry school. So the entire time I was off, never got behind in the house payment, never got behind in the car payment. The Lord looked out for us. He's into the details. Just because I became ordained this year doesn't mean that I am going to go take a church somewhere. The knowledge that I learned from the mentors and from the people that I have been learning with, Pastor Eric, Pastor Bill, that knowledge is helping me in the preparation for what he wants us to do what he wants me to do. Um, during the last two years, I've questioned a lot of things. Okay, Lord, we're living in this apartment. You've got me ordained. What do you want me to do? Because things weren't happening in my time. Right? And too many times, we want the things to happen in our time, not his time. And he knows what, what's better. He started two years ago preparing us to move. But for right now, it's enough supporting her and getting involved in ministry. <laughs> it's funny that they, she got hired first after all these years, and I'm just tagging along. But he hired me making more money than I'm making now. And the excitement was when I was interviewing for the job, I had to interview, by the way. You know. When I was interviewing for the job, the guy goes, so you've been in security or done some form of security for the last 40 years? And I go, yeah. He goes, why are you applying for a p uh, an officer position? Why don't you become a patrol officer? Because you have the knowledge. And so I said, okay. And he said, by the way, that pays more money. So I said, okay, I'll do that. I wouldn't be involved in ministry if it wasn't for what Jesus wants us to do. I couldn't be or wouldn't be excited about the move and about what he has in store for us and about the ministry, about everything that he has prepared me for. And remember this, he can prepare you for your ministry. It took two years for him to prepare us for the move. We have to remember it's his timing, not our timing. So what's really exciting to me is God is in the details. He watches out for each and every one of us. Psalms 37, 23. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. He has every step of the way directed my life. It only took me 35 years to see that. He has used different people at different times. Each time in my life, when there's a major change, he starts ahead of time to prepare my life. He doesn't tell me what that major change is going to be, and he won't tell you either. He'll just start preparing you. Things will fall into place. I love the fact that he's into the details. When we moved down to Vancouver, he, the house we moved into wasn't a house that we wanted to look at. But the realtor said, oh, by the way, the realtor is not a Christian, but the realtor said, I got a house you want to look at. As soon as we walked in the door of the house, Karen goes, this is home. This is what we wanted. But it wasn't on the agenda for us to look at. Recently, we had a situation where, oh, no problem. You can stay with us while you're finding a house. 
last week. They said, no, you got the two dogs. Our allergies are not going to allow us to have those two dogs. So on the 30th of the month, we're homeless. We found an apartment yesterday. We can move in on the 28th. He is into the details. And the cost is the same we're paying now. I love the fact that he is into the details. He knows what we need, and most of all, when you need it. In that moment when he created, the, think about it, in the moment when he created the earth, he put all the veins into the leaves. He, the details how it all worked together. I had a, a biology teacher. Now, I didn't believe. I, I believed in the Lord, but I didn't have him in my heart when I was in high school. So I belonged to a group called CKCKC, Central Kids App Christian Kids Club. And we had a biology teacher as a mentor because we needed somebody that was there. And he did a devotion one morning, and this devotion has always stuck with me. He brought in a clear plastic box, and he threw water in, and he threw copper and salt and all the chemicals that make up the human body. And he said, okay, there's the human body. And everything, including the water, that was required to make up the human body was in that plastic box. And he goes... Now, how was it formed? Think about it. It took God to make those chemicals and that water form together to create the human body. How much more does he care for us, his prized creation? Have you given your details to God? He knows them already, but when we hand them over to him, something wonderful happens. He is in charge. We have to have faith. We may not see the bigger picture, but God is in the detail. So in closing, I'd like to remember when you gave your heart to the Lord. Do you remember when you were excited about sharing the gospel or the fact that you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Doing what Jesus wants you to do. There comes a time when we have to step out in faith to start a ministry or work in a ministry. And when we do that, we're accomplishing what Jesus wants us to do. I am excited about the pastor and the ministries in this church. Lisa's ministry, the ministry of socks, had ministry. I am excited about the ministries that the churches are now found, are, are forwarding out to the community, you know, to help the communities. It's your opportunity to spend time in prayer. Let him lead you in the direction that you're to go. Does that mean that that ministry is going to be yours for the rest of your life? No. I started out as a children's pastor. Do I have any idea of where I'm going to go from here? No. Do I know what I'm going to be doing at Life 360? No. It's exciting It's exciting to look forward to what he has in store for us. We need to be excited about Jesus Christ. I mean, what has he done for us? We need to get excited again like that first time when you realized what he has done when he went to the cross for us. 
You need to seek what Jesus has in store for you. Find your ministry. You need to get involved in it and get excited about it. I remember when I got involved in Royal Rangers. I was a pew sitter. I sat in the pew, enjoyed the service, wasn't going to get involved. And I saw my son getting his first award. And I heard a voice that said, get up, get out of your seat, get involved. And every step of the way, he made it possible for me to do what I needed to do to be involved in that ministry. That ministry has changed. I'm still involved, but it's not my focus anymore. I'm still involved in Royal Rangers. I still go to the FCF campouts. I still am reaching boys for Christ. But it's not my primary focus. My primary focus is now on whatever church I go into, get involved in the ministries of that church. Because that is the basis what we need to start on. Be involved. Get excited about what he has in store for you. Because once we get involved and excited in it and people see our excitement, they want to know why or how we are excited about what we're excited about. And so that's been my challenge to you. My challenge to you is to get involved and get excited about what you can get involved in. And there is plenty of ministries right here. Does that mean he's going to move you? No. Not necessarily. Maybe. But we have to be willing to stay or to go on what he has based us on, our lives. And uh, I'm going to miss this church. <laughs> So, uh, Pastor. Thanks, Scott. Stay here. Come on up. Um, I want to pray for them. We're going to, before we close, and then we'll uh, try to see where we're at with the potluck. But, uh, um, you know, I, I think the Bible talks about the laying on of hands and sending off. I think when Paul was in Acts, when he was going back to Rome, the church sent him. And then Paul and Silas and Barnabas and, and all them, they, they would lay hands on them and impart just a, a blessing, a favor. And uh, you guys have definitely been family. And uh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's just been great having you. And it's, it's, uh, it's a bittersweet day in that... Uh, I know my heart jumped when you, uh, Karen goes, oh, Pastor, I didn't want to tell you this, but I've applied for a job to run a daycare up in, uh, in Arlington. I'm like, that's it? Uh, I was like, you got it. I already knew that at the moment. And I thought, well, it's given. It's like, we better start packing. So I knew that was going to happen. So when you called back and said they, they hired you, I was like, yeah, I know. So uh, you know, just the quality that, that you have and, and uh, we are uh, going to miss them. Uh, Karen has been serving on our board, and so our board is actually having to probably, we're appointing someone to uh, replace your position, and it's there. And she was a secretary, so that's quite a, uh, we're, uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, So can we just uh, lift your hands forward? I just want to uh, bind our prayers together. And uh, Lord, we uh, we love Scott and Karen. We thank you for them. We thank you for the skin and the game, if you will, that they've had in this church. Lord, uh, the history goes even beyond their presence in this place. And Father, we thank you for the the blessing that you have bestowed upon us in getting to know them. And, to fellowship with them and to minister with them and wrestle with them. And Lord, uh, we just, in agreement right now, we want the very absolute most incredible best for them. 
And we pray that you would just make their path straight, that you would straight the crooked roads, and that, Lord, that you would just uh, be their undergird, Father, in every step. I pray, God, that you would, uh, uh, Father, just empower them. I pray the days of ministry, the days uh, that we have, as, as it says in Micah, that we count our days asunder, Lord. We count them, uh, Lord, the, the countdown. We know that you're coming soon. And, Father, in the days and the hours that we are waiting for you, Lord, I pray as they remain faithful, as they remain pressed in, as they continue to push forward, God, your kingdom. Uh, and, and, Lord, I just ask that you would just uh, uh, let them partner with you in great exploits in these last days. Uh, Lord, meet every need they have, from their housing to finances to respite, Lord, to medical, Lord, you know every need they have. And I just pray a hedge of protection upon them. We just anoint them, and we, we thank, Lord, in gratitude for them. But, Father, we send them. We send them to Arlington and to the Snohomish County. And, Lord, I pray that you just put the demonic strongholds on notice as, Lord, as they come. May your spirit go before them. May it prepare the way, Father. May it break forth, break down the barriers, Lord, in every area. And, Lord, give them just a freedom. I pray, God, that your spirit would go with them, that you would put a hedge of protection around them, that every weapon formed them against them would fail, that, Father, that it would be thwarted. I pray for confusion upon the enemy as they come. And in the spiritual realm, Lord, I pray that you would give them a great dominion of your kingdom and what you do. And, Lord, I pray that you go behind them and pick up the pieces and, and, and so all the un- undone things, Lord, as they trust you, Father, for all that they need. And so, Lord, we just uh, we lay our just our, our approval upon their ministry, approval upon them as people, and as the body. And Lord, we ask God that you would just, uh, Lord, we we pray for great reports of what you're about to do in and through them in their ministry, in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I know what uh, Catherine had something. spoke to me this morning this word over you that's the word isaiah 54 2 and 3 enlarge the place of your tent let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling do not spare lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you shall expand to the right and to the left that god is bringing growth and expansion beyond your wildest dreams as an act of faith in this next phase of your life, God is going to expand, grow, stretch, bless you beyond your wildest dreams, above and beyond all you dare hope, dream, or desire. And he also um, talks about in Joel 2 about the land being refreshed. He's going to give you the refreshing rain of his uh of his spirit that the former rain is coming and it's going to bring a, a spiritual refreshing it's going to bring physical refreshing mentally emotionally financially above and beyond what you can even imagine that he is going to um, restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust the consuming locust the chewing o- locust he is um, going to give back what the enemy has stolen from you in past years. And uh, the enemy is cannot touch you, cannot harm you, cannot do anything to you because he is on your side. And when God's on your side, the enemy uh, fails in every way. And, and I just thank you for your, all that you've done for this church and how you've blessed me and my family. And um, I just thank you and uh, praise God that he has great things for you. Jesus name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Time is running short, church. And uh, I think uh, just the words there of find your ministry. We all have a ministry. You know that, right? The moment Jesus imparted in your life, he didn't call you to sit in a chair. He didn't call you to just simply ride a bus. He called you to do something. And I'm thankful for this church in a lot of ways. And I, you know, 
I brag on you a lot uh, as a church. Um, in fact, I was over at the state rally bragging on you. In fact, there's a couple of people going, I want to check your church. I was like, we're a small church. But what's amazing about this church, and I think you're going to find this summer, is how many people are ministering. And I don't think our people know what our people are doing. And, uh, and so as we're doing these interviews and unfolding, and last week was absolutely powerful just hearing the testimony uh, of Tony and Lisa and just what is there. But there's some of the visible stuff that you go, yeah, we knew this. There's stuff you don't even know about. And uh, next week I got s- uh, somebody you can not even think twice about, and you're going to, whoa. And I know the reason why is we need not be a large group, but I'll tell you, God is preparing something that's going to happen. I think when it breaks, when it breaks, it's gonna be, we're going to have to do a lot to try to keep up. And, uh, but you know what? Jesus is coming back soon. Do you believe that? I do not want to stand before the Father groveling. Come on. I don't want to stand before the Father saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I could have done something more, but I was too busy. Anybody see the movie Schindler's List? I never saw the movie, but I saw the last scene as Schindler, who had saved thousands out of the Holocaust of the Jews. And he was he was upset, he was angry, and his 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 a friend of his was saying, but look what you've done, look what you've done. He's standing outside, and they were trying to honor him. And all I saw was a part, I kind of put the pet rest together, he pulled off his ring, and he said, this could have been one more. And I fell down in front of that TV because I thought about that, and I thought, you know what, there's going to come a day and a time that I'm going to become accountable for those around me. And I think, church, we've got to be faithful, amen? It's not about doing church. It's about being church. Amen? So uh, I'm going to pray. If you have an offering this morning, uh, gifts, we want to give opportunity, but we're just going to, there's a basket at the table and just ask that you, uh, in that, there should be an envelope. I believe the envelope's in there. Go ahead and just lay that in there and somebody will collect those at the end of the service. Uh, But meanwhile, can we just, uh, let's close in prayer this morning and we're going to, we'll, then we'll worship one more song. And, uh, and, uh, and just let Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your favor. I thank you, Lord, for your generosity in our lives. And, Lord, we just, uh, we come and we bring the best that we have. We bring our worship. We bring our attitude. Father, uh, some of us even smell really good. Father, we brought the best perfume. And Father, we also bring, we also bring our offerings. We bring our alms, our giving. And we ask God that you would just take it, that you would bless it, that you would multiply it, and that you'd meet every need exceedingly through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's uh, let's just worship the Lord. One more song here this morning. He is jealous for me. Love like a hurricane. I am a twist bending beneath the word of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of you, the bricks in the cliff are glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how good your affections are for me. And oh, Jealous for me. He is jealous for me. Love like a hurricane. I am a twin. Bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions and bliss, I
Voices. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. We just want to thank you, God, for the chance to worship you. We have all these beautiful voices. They're all genuine and they're reaching out to you, Father. That we just thank you that you created this as a family, as a community, to be strong together, to seek after you. And we just thank you for the love that you give us, that the love that we can practice amongst ourselves. We just love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for coming this morning. We have uh, some food, some potluck. I know they're barbecuing down there uh, and getting that all together. may take a couple minutes to kind of get this together. If you have food and you need 